afternoon, here we are at Pro Alloy HQ in the UK. I'm Chris, I'm Technical Director here at Pro Alloy. Today we are introducing a new product for the Ford Raptor V6 model. We are going to make this intercooler fit that monster. So to start off with, let's have a look at the contents of the kit, um, what you get when you buy this, uh, and we'll talk you through step by step how the installation is, and this is a really easy one. Um, first off, the intercooler itself, which is completely handmade here in the workshop by the guys next door. Um, really pleased with how this one's come out. Um, comes with a set of heavy duty mounting brackets, um, a little relocation bracket, a couple of spacer shims, um, and the nut and bolt type hardware that you'll need to buff this in situ. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a start stripping the car, uh, and I'll talk you through the easy steps to get the old intercooler off and we'll put it side by side with this one so you can see the difference. Right, so we've got the vehicle up on a two post lift at the minute. You don't need to do that. Um, you can do this on your driveway. There's so much ground clearance under here. You can get underneath it, um, it's fine. But for clarity, uh, you can see that, uh, all, all the fittings and stuff like that. It's gonna be far easier to show you like this. Um, first thing to uh, undo, there's four 15 mil headed bolts which hold on this thumping great right under tray. Two at the front, two at the back. The front two need to come out completely. The rear two, you can just loosen. So let's go ahead and undo those right now. Uh, as with everything else on these vehicles, this weighs a ton. Okay, with that under tray out the way, you can see the standard intercooler here, which sits underneath the radiator. Um, the, the biggest part of the installation really is removing the steel brackets, uh, which also form the towing eyes which poke through these gaps here in the bumper. Now, uh, we've been a bit clever with this, I think. We've, um, we've swapped these brackets from left to right because on the inside, there's this mounting platform for the standard intercooler, which would then make uh, fitting an in, uh, a larger intercooler really difficult. So what we've discovered is that we can swap these from left to right. There's a little bit of a process to that, which we'll get into now. First of all, I'm going to undo this little 8mm headed bolt here, and then there's two 15mm bolts that bolt this up into the chassis leg. We'll undo them now. Right, so we've taken this one, it's the passenger side toe and eye stroke intercooler mounting bracket off the chassis. Um, now, Ford labelled these left and right. Um, in their wisdom, they also decided to fit this little tab on here which means that there's no way that they could be swapped around the wrong way um, on the production line. So what we need to do to enable this to be fitted on the opposite side, we need to bend that little tab flat. Um, it's not particularly strong, it is made of steel, um, but you can pretty much just get an adjustable spanner or something of that nature, paramile grips or something, pop that on there, push it over and with that like that you can then swap these left to right and they'll pick up on the original bolt holes As per the other side, this is now the driver's side that we're working on. I've done exactly the same, undone the same bolts, pull it off, bracket comes down, we'll bend the tab on this one as we did on the opposite side. The intercooler now is just hanging on the hoses. That's all you need to do. Now, all of the boost hoses on the uh, boost pipe work here are retained onto the spigots with a, a simple wire clip. 
Now, a lot of manufacturers do this day, these days. Uh, the, the idea being that it's nice and quick for assembly. Makes things a little bit fiddly, I suppose. But actually, you can just bust the clip off like that. And then give it a bit of a wiggle. So you can take the clip off, get it out of the way, give it a squeeze, off she comes. So that's one side done. We've got to do it twice on the other side. The other side are the twin inlets from the turbos. So with the unit off the vehicle, you can sort of see uh, the substance of it, which is not a lot really, considering twin turbo V6. If you take this shutter arrangement off the back of the intercooler, you can actually see that what we're talking about it is not particularly substantial um, in terms of surface area. We're well ahead on that. If you take a look at this one. Also internally, we did some internal measurements on this. The standard unit holds four liters. Uh, this one holds seven and a half, so we've got an 87 and a half percent increase in internal volume. The spigots are machined to be the same dimensions as the original. So the hoses on the vehicle are plug and play. Uh, so next thing we're gonna do is swap those tow and eye brackets over on the chassis and offer the new intercooler into position. So here we have left and right intercooler brackets, which will bolt up to the chassis leg with the original Ford bolts. What we'll have is this bracket sandwiched between the chassis leg on the top and the heavy duty tow in eye brackets underneath. And in this instance, what we're doing is having the intercooler mounting holes at the rear of the bracket. So this is the passenger side, the mirror image one is for the driver's side. Okay, so we've bent our tabs on our tow in eye brackets. Uh, we've put the intercooler brackets between the tow in eye brackets and the chassis legs. And here you can see, I haven't bolted anything up tight yet, we leave it loose just so it's in situ. Uh, you can see how that sits there. Uh, you can also see how those brackets have easily swapped over from left to right. No harm done there. And of course you can put all this back to standard if you need to later on. Well, we're pretty much ready to offer the new intercooler into place, apart from a little bracket to relocate this auxiliary pump, which I'll show you now. So this little bracket that comes with the kit is just to do a little quick relocation up here. Uh, it comes with it, got a 13 mil nut on it, and a stud, we're going to get that into position now so you can see where exactly where it goes. Okay, so this bolt here holds this auxiliary water pump here. We undo that. And the purpose of this is just to create a little bit more space for this intercooler hose. We take that out, move that out the way, and I'll show you how the new bracket fits on. So what we've done there is added our little extra bracket in here, which just relocates this water pump slightly further down to give you more space for this intercooler hose. 10 mil bolt there. Thirteen mil nut there. Just nip them up, you're all done. When you receive the intercooler, you'll also see that the bolts and the washers for mounting it are in their respective positions. The reason that we do that is that there is one short bolt, three bolts of the same size, the two on the driver side of the car are one size, as is the top one on the passenger side. The lower one on the passenger side is shorter, okay? So you need to just remember not to put one of the longer bolts in that lower hole, because that is a blind fitting in there, hence it has a short bolt so it doesn't bottom out. Okay, so we're ready to offer the new intercooler into position on the vehicle. We've got our brackets in position, we've moved our water pump on the little spacer bracket. Uh, we're gonna lift this up now. Um, the top of the intercooler has got these rubber isolators that are okay, you can clearly see there's two holes in the underside of the radiator support bar. So we're gonna lift this up into position. We're gonna plug 
the hoses onto the spigots on the rear face of the intercooler and we're going to get our bolts into our mounting holes on the intercooler remembering the little short one at the bottom on the passenger side. someone to help you lift this into position because it's a fairly weighty beast and to help you clip the hoses on as the intercooler goes up into position. So the intercooler is in situ, brackets loosely bolted together, we've got the four 13mm headed bolts through our chassis brackets, uh, remember the short bolt on the, on the passenger side, don't do any of the tie knot brackets up yet until you've nipped up the ones on the intercooler, so we're going to nip them up now, do the four that go into the intercooler, all the hoses are clipped in, just check they're secure, we're all good. Four intercooler bolts, do them up first, and then do up the two 15mm headed bolts that hold the toe and eye and the brackets up to the chassis leg. Okay, we're just about to fit the under tray back on. Under tray, the two rear bolts which we left in, we left in place, because you can just slide those over, those rear holes are slotted, so you just slot them over the rear bolts. The front bolts bolt back into our uh, toe and eye, brackets, even though we've swapped them over, the, the holes still line up the same. The only thing to check is a little bit of clearance between the bottom of the intercooler here and this face of the under tray. Sometimes you might be a little bit closer than others, it just depends on the tolerance on the vehicle. So we supply with these shims just to space it down by a couple of mil if you need to. You just don't want the uh, under tray rubbing on the bottom of the intercooler. So if necessary, you can fit those on the front two bolt positions and when you bolt this up, you just create a little bit more space if required. Right, so under tray going back on, bolt through there, shims on top if needed, and the bolt will find its way into the tire line bracket. Get in a few turns. Check everything lines up, go around it, nip them up, that's it, job done.